Hello everybody, welcome back to Crafting and Crime Daily. I'm your host Rebecca and I recap live trials so you have something to listen to while you're crafting. I'm trying to knock my coffee over again. Um, <laughs> thank you Joanna for the sweater. Oh, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. Happy Valentine's Day everybody. All right, we're here to talk about the Montgomery trial. So it's just a quick recap. This is a trial uh, where Adam Montgomery is is being uh, charged with second degree assault for an incident that happened in July of 2019 where he hit Harmony in the face, causing her to have a black eye. I think that's pretty much a given. We've seen enough evidence where the jury could find beyond a reasonable doubt that yes, he did do that. What we've learned so far is he claims he did it because he came out of the bathroom and she was suffocating his infant son. So he basically backhanded her. <sighs> Wouldn't have been my first response, but okay. So I think guilty on that charge. Now the second charge, murder. The murder of Harmony Montgomery. Now, <sighs> Her body has never been found, and I don't think it ever will be because she was in pieces. If um, the death of young children bothers you, this is probably not the case that you want to hear about. I don't go into any specifics of the murder, but we've already heard from his wife, Kayla Montgomery, who credibility is just in the toilet. <laughs> I don't believe a word she said. I think something happened to this child that neither of them are ever going to tell the truth about. And uh, they did something with their body. They both know where she is, but uh, we're never going to hear that. And we're never going to know what really happened to her. So it doesn't, it doesn't behoove me to talk about what Kayla says happened to her because I don't believe her. And if he happens to take the stand, which I doubt because he hasn't even been in court one single day, not one single day of his trial for murder. Okay. So yesterday, uh, a police officer took the stand. Now we've heard from Kayla that on November 29th, now this is shortly after Thanksgiving, uh, they got into a car accident. They had already been evicted from the home that they were living in because nobody was paying the mortgage. It was his mom's house, but nobody was paying the mortgage. So they were living in their car, a Chrysler Sebring. They get into an accident. So this officer responded and he said he remembers this be and it, he remembers it because he's never handled accidents where he had the same driver in two in the same week because two days after this accident he had he gets called out for another accident where Adam Montgomery is driving a vehicle so in this accident uh, he's driving the Chrysler Sebring and the officer said that in the car was uh, Kayla was sitting in the rear of the car with two young children that were in their car seats and he described exactly where they were sitting. In the middle car seat was Seamus Montgomery, her older son, their older son. And in the passenger seat was, or the, not passenger, in the rear left, or was it right? I don't know. Near the window was Declan, the infant. In the front passenger seat was a woman by the name of Tabitha Scott. I don't know who that is. And uh, of course, Adam was driving. No Harmony Montgomery. And he says, no, I, I did not see a little girl. Mm -mm. Interesting. Now, we don't know what kind of accident this was, how bad it was. I'm guessing not too bad. Nobody was injured. And uh, so then he goes to the next. Oh, he did mentioned that there was a lot of clutter in the vehicle because you know we know they were living out of it so that was to be expected then uh two days later he gets called for another accident involving adam montgomery now i i can't remember if this was the same car yeah it was the same car chrysler sebring same car 
And he said this time there was um, just Kayla and Adam in the car, no children. And I believe when Kayla testified, she said that when they got into that second accident, the kids were being uh, watched by Tabitha Scott, one that had been in that prior accident with him. Okay. So that was his testimony. So he corroborated that small portion of Kayla's story. But on the 29th, where was Harmony? Where was Harmony? This is why I don't believe Kayla's story. And, and I'll talk about that later. Anyway, so then uh, next person on the stand was uh, a guy that had, he doesn't work there anymore, but he, ha he was working at Dunkin' Donuts at the same time as Kayla Montgomery and Adam Montgomery. I didn't know Adam worked at Dunkin' Donuts, but yeah, he did work there for a period of time. So he was friends with both of them. And on December 8th, he got uh, a Facebook message from Adam, like late during the night. Now, this is the day after Kayla says Adam murdered Harmony Montgomery. So late that night, he gets a call that they need a jump. Um, now, we this will tie into testimony that's going to come later. So I'll, I'll tie it all up later. So they did show a, a picture of the Facebook message. And he was like, I don't have cables. And um, they're like, oh, we're going to die. We're going to freeze to death in our car. And he said, I, I'm sorry, I can't help you. I got to get up early in the morning and go to work. And he was no help to the, his friends. So the next person on the stand was a guy named Aaron Sweeney. And he was a tow truck driver. He had responded to the Chrysler Sebring on December 7th. This is the day that Kayla said, you know, they, Adam had murdered Harmony. They had gone to Burger King. They went to the Colonial Village parking lot to eat their food. Then they had some drugs and then they drove around and their car broke down at a light. So this guy, he responds and he, tows it over to a gas station parking lot and then gives them time to get their stuff out of the vehicle. Now he was asked about, you know, what did he witness as far as what they got out of the vehicle? And he said, you know, I always try to give the, I don't really pay attention. I go off, you know, over by my truck. I just let them have privacy and then I let them take all their stuff out. I wasn't watching them. That's convenient testimony. So we don't know what they were taking out of the vehicle. And then he towed the, the car away and it sat in a junkyard for over two years before the police got a hold of it. Then we hear later yesterday during several officers' testimony that they searched the vehicle. It was full of car parts. And what they did was they used that uh, blue reagent that they can spray and uh, it you know, they turn off the lights and they spray this stuff. And it, if there's blood anywhere in the vehicle, it'll light up. And the trunk liner did line up, uh, did light up. So they cut out pieces of the trunk liner and sent that for DNA testing. He also, they also found a pink toothbrush in the Chrysler Sebring and they sent that for DNA testing. So uh, I don't know what else they found. Uh, I think there were a total of eight items. I'm not sure what the other items were, but it, was, it really wasn't a focus of the testimony. Then <laughs> we got Mr. Bodero, the drug dealer. Uh, he was quite the character and uh, came to court with his lawyer. Not, he didn't enter with his lawyer. You're like, you know, the jury's already in the courtroom. I'm trying to paint a picture for you. The jury's already in the courtroom. His lawyer's already in the courtroom. And then they go and get him and he comes in. But we find out later that, yeah, he's there with his lawyer. And he's there 
uh, based on a, an agreement for immunity so that and he can't be prosecuted based on anything that he testifies to on the stand. Because I thought, how in the world is this guy going to testify that he sold them drugs? But it, he, because he got an immunity. Good thing, because he's on probation. <laughs> or he, I don't know, three years. He had a, he, he had at one point in time, this is how we met Adam. Uh, he had to go to a traffic court for driving without a driver's license. This is what he said. He had to go to traffic court. Turns out it was it was a traffic court. Yeah, he got charged with driving while a driver's license, but he was also had a drug charge, and he ended up with like a suspended sentence of three years, which means he's on probation. And if he does anything wrong, he has to go serve his three year sentence. But anyway, so he lived at the Colonial Village Apartments with his. Uh, he called her a girlfriend at one point. He called her his wife. So I don't know. And uh, he did admit, yes, I would sell drugs to Adam and Caleb. Oh, I was going to tell you how he met him. So he meets Adam because he has to go to this drug court, traffic court, whatever you want to believe. And he needs a ride because, you know, he doesn't have a driver's license. He's got a car. <laughs> he doesn't have a driver's license. So he can't drive himself to court. They'll be waiting for him. So he calls a friend of his and his friend says, I, I can't drive you, but I got a guy here uh, who, who can drive you. So this friend of his and Adam drive over to the Colonial Village Apartments. They pick him up and they take him to traffic court. And that's how he meets uh, Adam. So he does admit that he would sell drugs to Kayla and Adam. And he was asked how often he is. Well, whenever I had them, I would sell them to, to them. So he would either take cash or food stamps. So they would turn over their food stamp card to him and he would check the balance. And for example, the balance was $100. He would give them $50 worth of drugs. So he was charging them. He would give 50% of what the value of the food stamps. So the children were not getting the formula and diapers that they needed, but yeah, this guy was getting the food stamps. And he said he would sell them heroin and crack. So he talks about letting them stay in his vehicle. So they finally narrow the time frame down uh, that this was December 8th, the day after. Kayla says Harmony was murdered. And they came to him and said, we don't have any place to live. We've been evicted. Uh, can we, you know, he says, well, you can live in my car for a couple, you know. Well, he says, you can live in my car. He says, they, he didn't tell them how long they could live in his car, but they only stayed there a couple of days. And the first night that they were there, they ran the battery down because it was cold outside. This is December. Uh, and in New Hampshire, and they were very cold, and they ran the battery down. So this is why they were calling their friend from the Dunkin' Donut, or they were Facebook messaging their friend from Dunkin' Donut to come give them a jump. Well, by the time, and he says when they were living in his car in the parking lot of Colonial Village, he would go down a couple of times and check on them. He said one time he gave him his Thanksgiving leftovers from a week before. <laughs> um, his, he wants the jury to believe he never saw them while they were saying in their Chrysler Sebring during the 10 days prior to December 8th when they were staying in his car. He says he never saw them. He never saw Harmony Montgomery on December 8th when they were staying in the car, when he would go down and see them and the kids and he would give them the leftover Thanksgiving. And one time he brought him a pizza. Uh, no Harmony. He said he's only seen Harmony twice in his lifetime. Uh, the first time was, he didn't say when the first time was. He did, but uh, when he saw her, the, both times that he saw her, they were living in the house that they got evicted from the day before Thanksgiving. So 
he said uh, this whole drug traffic court thing happened in August, and it was probably a month to six weeks later when he saw Harmony for the final time at that house. So that had to be September, October. He never, he will, he would not admit to seeing Harmony in that parking lot in any vehicle. And he was very emphatic about it. I don't know anything about Harmony Montgomery. I want to make this clear. And he did say that. I want to make this clear. I don't know anything about Harmony. Never saw her. Saw the boys. Never saw Harmony. So he was asked, did they ever come to your apartment to, you know, use the bathroom, clean up? Nope, they did not. So that was his testimony. They kept it brief. They did. And the cross-examination wasn't, wasn't really tough. I mean, she, she crossed him on the drug charge versus the traffic charge, and, you know, but she got out that he's on a suspended sentence and he was kind of a smart ass, this guy. He really was, you know. Because uh, he would, uh, she would ask him specifics about seeing Harmony and seeing, you know, them in the parking lot. And he would, I don't remember. I, I don't remember. I don't remember that. Mm -mm. Don't remember that. Mm -mm. You mean you didn't come down and she smiled at you and waved? No, I don't remember that. Because mm -mm. that was Kayla's testimony that he came down and she smiled and waved at him. Mm -mm. He said no. Never saw him in a Sebring. I don't know anything about a Chrysler Sebring. Okay. So the next person on the stand was Kayla's mom. Now, I was, I remember thinking when Kayla testified, is her mom going to take the stand? Yeah, she did. Um, and it was brief. It, you know, I would have asked her so many more questions. I, you know, how's your daughter's, uh, Ability to tell the truth. Does she have? Does she have a reputation for truthfulness? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, my daughter's a drug addict. Okay, so she said, you know, that her daughter was Kayla Montgomery. Her name was Christine Lubin, and for a living, she does like high-end waitressing, like probably banquet waitressing, that kind of thing. And she, um, and this is important, she upscales furniture. So she goes and she collects old furniture and she refurbishes it and sells it. And during, and they talked about the tools that she uses to do this. Yeah. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> We're going to get to that. So uh, she said she only saw Harmony Montgomery one time. She only met her one time. Yeah. So not a very close relationship between uh, Kayla and her mother because Kayla's been married to him for a few years by the time, well, she had, they got custody of Kayla earlier in 2019. So for the first 10 months that they had her, or the, or the 10 months that they had her, they never went to grandma's house. So they go to grandma's house shortly after Thanksgiving. And she remembers this day because she had just put up the Christmas tree and she turned off all the lights so all three children would see the Christmas tree. Um, they weren't staying with mom. They were staying in their car. Then the second time uh, they she saw Kayla, the next time she saw Kayla, uh, she did allow her to stay with them for a couple of weeks. And that was in December. But before that, Kayla calls her mom. So between a few days after Thanksgiving, when the kids see the Christmas lights on the tree and the time she comes to stay with her mom, this is the time period when Kayla says this murder occurred. She calls her mom and she says, Mom, we've got a flat tire. We need money. We're living in our car. So mom says, okay, I, you know, I got to go out, but I'm going to leave you some money in a cooler, a cooler, a red cooler with a white lid. Pay attention. Uh, where you can get it. So she put it in a stairwell where they, not everybody had access to it, but they could get to it. And she put the money underneath a piece of cardboard and she put the cardboard at the bottom of the cooler. 
Then she was asked to identify this cooler because the police came to her after this, you know, two years later. And she's like, here's the cooler. <laughs> here's the cooler. This is, and they said, do you know, what did she use this cooler for? Well, she said she would take refreshments to basketball games. I don't know if she was playing basketball. I don't know who was playing basketball, but so she, that's what she used the cooler for. And she, he says, well, do you have any idea what else it was used for? No. I swear to <laughs> my God, if my kid borrowed my cooler and then returned it after having a dead body in it, I'd kill him. <laughs> We'd have some words. Oh, my God. <laughs> what? She returned the cooler to her mom. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. After they carried the dead body around in the cooler. Oh, my God. I, why would you give that back to your mom? Hey, Mom, you want your cooler back? Oh, my God. Anyway, I, can't, I couldn't get over that one. So then they talked to her about some of the tools of her trade. And uh, she uses a miter saw because they asked to search her home. And they had a search warrant. She says they didn't really do a lot of searching, but they found the cooler and they found some of this equipment that she used for her business to refurbish this furniture, upscale it. She, a miter saw mm -hmm. and a circular saw. Did anybody have access to it? Yeah, I, I mean, and she described how she kept it. Um, yeah. And then they showed her pictures. This what it looks like? Yep. This is what this one looks like? Yep. So the last questioning um, that they had for her was, how did Harmony look when you saw her? Did, and she said she looked, she looked fine. She was clean. She looked healthy. She had on her glasses. She, she was very quiet. She didn't talk a lot. But, you know, yeah, she only saw her one time. <sighs> yeah. Interesting. Then the last person on the stand was the DNA person. And she spent the last portion of the day talking about, the, you know, they have to do this whole buildup of the DNA evidence. You know, they have to describe how they do it. You know, how they, you know, take it out of the cell and break it down and blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> so she never got to the conclusions. So that will, that is happening this morning, that testimony. So we're going to find out what was tested, what the results were. Um, <laughs> like, oh my God, I can't get over this cooler thing, guys. Like, that just freaks me out. All right, guys, <laughs> that is yesterday's testimony in the Adam Montgomery case. So still no clue as to whether he will testify on his own behalf or not. I don't think it's going to help him at all because I don't think it's going to help. <laughs> I don't think anything could help this guy at all at this point. Yeah. Which is why he's probably not bothering to come to court. He knows he's a goner. He knows what he did. You know, the jury was asked to, uh, not to infer anything by his absence. You know, he doesn't have to be there. Um, you have the right to confront your accusers, but you don't have to be there when they do. So, all right. Have a great Valentine's Day, everybody. I'm going to be live tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern. No, I'm sorry. 7 p.m. Central Time. And um, I don't know what I'm going to do. Craft. You know, I could work on my... Uh, bed of roses crochet or I know you guys are sick of seeing crochet aren't you I know that's all I ever do is crochet I love crochet um I don't know we'll do something <laughs> I'll see you then bye everybody take care